What's poppin' everybody? Several five four. So the English scans for team up are up on Bulbapedia here. They're not up on Serebi yet, which is what I usually use. But since they're up on Bulbapedia, we're gonna use this website to talk about the best cards and my favorite cards from this set. So there's a best cards and favorite cards set review. If you wanna look at all of the cards and team up, you can look at my in-depth reviews for Tack Bolt and Dark Order. Those are the those are the Japanese sets. Uh, this English set combines, so two really strong sets, and a lot, a lot of great cards are going to be released, just like with most Pokemon sets. They, they know what they're doing, one up in every single set. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me, going to be looking at all of the Tac Tac Team GXs, uh, even though some of them there might not be too good. I'm not sure if they're going to be too great, but we're going to look at them since they're going to be very significant. Uh, they're going to be the first of a new batch. So first of all, we have Celebi and Venusaur GX here. If there's one thing this Pokemon has over the other Tag Team GXs, it's the HP. 270 is pretty high. Uh, Waylord has 300, but... <clears throat> Damn, excuse me. That Pokemon isn't, isn't a Pokemon that really is going to attack. It's probably going to be part of Troll decks, Deck Out decks like the Waylord DX. But anyway, as far as Venusaur is concerned, uh, big high HP... Retreat cost is quite big too, as to be expected, and it's got three attacks. Pollen Hazard does 50 for three, and it's going to burn, confuse, and poison the opponent. So not a lot of base damage for three energy, but it is DC compatible. And between the burn and the poison, it becomes like 80, I guess, and you get the confusion. And if your opponent uh, sticks around, then the damage is going to add up from there. So if you want to use this and combine this with Survivor from Burning Shadows, it might be something. Since this guy is a, a grass dude, you can combine it with a lot of different Pokemon, like the Venusaur from Shining Legends, to make the attacks, meet the attack costs much easier. For example, Solar Beam does 150 for 4, that's not very good, but if you can do it for 2, then it becomes much better. Um, you slap a Choice Band and a few more add-ons, and you could get one-hit knockouts on a lot of Pokemon. Uh, it, it's not so great, you know, just doing 180 with add-ons these days is not quite enough to get the job done, but it is decent, I guess. Uh, the best thing about this Pokemon is Evergreen GX. You do 180 for 4, and you heal all damage from this Pokemon. And if this Pokemon has at least one extra Grass Energy attached to it, so if it has 5 as opposed to 4, then you shuffle all cards from your discard pile into your deck. So this is a Lysander top card just for you, mass recovery, mass deck recovery, and it can be pretty powerful. You get all your cards back, kind of reset the game for yourself in a way. Uh, it's not so bad. Uh, I'm not really sure what this Pokemon can be combined with. Like I've said, there's a bunch of good grass support Pokemon that you can combine it with. You got Venusaur, you got the, uh, what, what is it called? Lorantis that boosts damage, you can use that Pokemon too. You can use Leafeon to heal, you can do a bunch of stuff. It just, it doesn't really, because of the high energy costs and the mediocre damage, I can't really see this Pokemon being a super aggressive attacker. Maybe it would make a good tank deck in grass, something like that. You can definitely take advantage of uh, healing cards with all this HP. So Venusaur, not necessarily the, the one that screams out the most playable. But let's look at the rest. So the other tag team GX Pokemon, who's next up? We got Pikachu and Zekrom, the original one that got featured in, I think it was the World Championship where they announced it. So this Pokemon has 240 HP, a significant difference from Venusaur. It's a bit less, but you've got more broken attacks in a way. You got full blitz. You can do 150 for three lightning energies and you search your deck up for up to three lightning energies and attach them to one of your Pokemon. So pretty powerful. I mean, if you're going to use a Pokemon like this with Magnezone, maybe you don't care so much about the energy acceleration from the deck, but you know, it's still pretty good. If you don't use it with that Pokemon and you just want to use the Thunder Mountain Stadium and, you know, just more uh, straight up combination with Raikou from Shiny Legends and other Pokemon to power this guy up. It should be pretty good then. Then the energy acceleration it it offers becomes much better. 
and it's pretty good, man. This is much better than, I would say, Venusaur, because you have a lot of obvious options you can utilize, such as the Thunder, the Electro Power, Electro Power uh, Trainer. You play a bunch of these, you just use one, one of that and maybe a Choice Band, and you're in that range to get one hit knockouts on anything. It's not going to be very difficult to do. So that's pretty good. Just a lot of... Uh, Lightning has so many great options right now from supporting cards to uh, other partners, Pokemon partners you can utilize. So it's just very versatile Pokemon for sure. And the Tack Bolt GX, which is the basically the Japanese set uh, name from this attack, it does 200 for 3. That's already pretty good. It's in that range to get a lot of good knockouts before add-ons. And you just need one more like a choice band or an electro power to take care of any stage one GX Pokemon. And if it has a three if it has at least three extra energy, then it does one seventy to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. An incredible amount uh, for a snipe. So it's basically like if you use this attack right, you can get like two big knockouts with one attack, like straight up. Like Tabulele is always played everywhere. And if you basically hit a Pokemon like that <laughs> You get two free prizes, you know, easily while getting a knockout on the active Pokemon. I would imagine if you're going to use this attack, you're going to make sure you knock out a big GX. Okay, now I do need to stress, I'm not sure if, uh, you know, these tag team GX Pokemon are going to completely take over. And then uh, the regular stage one GX Pokemon that are mostly used now won't be as relevant. So, you know, you got to do even more damage to take care of the big guys. But I think it's still very, very high damage. Uh, most of the stuff like Zorark are still probably going to be played. So yeah, great, great Pokemon. That's all it has, just two attacks and uh, the standard stats for Lightning Pokemon. Retreat is kind of big still, Metal Resistance. Fighting Weakness can always be trouble, uh, but it is what it is. It brings a lot to the table. Uh, you're just going to have to be careful around Buzzles and Lycanrocs. All right, what do we got next? We got Gengar and Mimikyu GX. This this one might even be stronger than Zekrom. So this is basically completely reminiscent of the Gengar, the Stormfront Gengar with the Poltergeist attack. Uh, your opponent reveals their hand. This attack does 50 damage for each trainer card you find there. So that's a lot of damage. If they just have three, you're doing 150 for two Psychic Energies. Now, what this Pokemon basically enables is the revival of the Vilegar deck, basically an expanded. We still have the Vileplume from Agent Origins, and you can use this with this Gengar, and it's basically almost the same as the classic Vilegar from the DP Hard Gold Soul Silver days. There's stuff, there's stuff like the Dimension Valley too, that stadium, so you can even perform this attack with one Psychic Energy, and just a lot of support for Psychic. And a lot of support for a Pokemon like this. You know, you trainer lock your opponent. And then you do Poltergeist for very high damage. It's pretty busted. I don't know if it's going to be as effective in Standard. Because we don't have a Vileplume. But I definitely see it being a strong Pokemon in Expanded. Uh, obviously, it's going to have trouble against Zorark GX. That Pokemon is still the king down there. But, I mean, it's, it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot of damage, man. With the lock. I... <laughs> Poltergeist always been good. All right, and then Horror House GX. It's only other attack. It's GX attack. One side you get energy, and your opponent can't play any cards from their hand during their next turn. And if this Pokemon has at least one psychic energy more, then each player draws cards until they have seven cards in their hand. So what this basically does is it sets up your opponent to have stuck cards stuck in their hand, so you can. Basically, even before you get Vileplume out, try and just slow them down and do lots of damage with Portageist. And if you have an extra one, you can even force them to draw and build up their hand that way. And if they draw a lot of cards, there's a good chance they're going to draw more trainer cards. So, building up the Portageist attack once again. So, very obvious synergy with Portageist. And it also helps you draw too, which is great. So this Pokemon, I mean, it maybe would have been good if it had another trick up its sleeve. Uh, otherwise, once you use Horror House GX, then you just have Poltergeist. 
but you know it's it's amazing it's very very strong 240 HP the same as Zekrom Pikachu uh, fighting resistance pretty handy uh, the darkness weakness of course can be trouble and retreat is kind of standard for a broken Pokemon like this at two so yeah I definitely see this Pokemon definitely seen a lot of play in expanded for sure and maybe it's even gonna make a good splash in standard I don't know what else to say really it's just great psychic Pokemon and <laughs> let's hope let's hope it doesn't become the new hell uh, we have to deal with all right uh, what else do we have here let me just find I want to find all of the tag team GX's okay Latias and Latios nice nice this one is probably my favorite I love the full arts but this one uh, you know the heart shape thing anyway so this Pokemon is pretty good as well but I feel like it kind of gets I thought it was great in the beginning but I think it kind of it still gets overshadowed by alternate Cosmic GX with Buster Purge you can do 240 and for four energy uh, you need two psychics and one water on but you guys can see that it can work with Malamar. You just use this as opposed to the other Necrozma GXs and you discard three energies and you do 240 damage. Now if you discard three with Ultra Necrozma GX, you do, I think it's 260, yeah. And you have the option to do less if you want to and even higher if you want to. So it kind of gets outclassed. Uh, I mean, you've got more HP and it is, uh, well, Ultra Cosma is a basic Pokemon too, so I guess you just have more HP, and you give more, pro you give an extra prize when you get knocked out. So I don't know. Uh, it does have though the GX attack, the plus GX attack that all the attack team GXs have. In this case, Arrow Unit GX, you attach five basic energy cards from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like, and if this Pokemon has one extra energy, then basically it becomes invincible as well when you use this attack. Uh, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to it during your opponent's next turn. So I guess it it's a bit self-sufficient too, as opposed to Ultra Necrozma, which it really requires uh, Malamar to work, either that or the B string. So I don't know. Better retreat. The weakness is the same. It's just a different Pokemon you can use. Uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, you can't really use it with anything else other than Psychic. I would say uh, it does it does need a water energy but you can't use cards like aqua patch with it so I don't think it's gonna be as relevant as perhaps Gengar and Zekrom but it's definitely it definitely has its uses you you guys can see the obvious synergy uh, with decks like Malamar and stuff so who knows maybe if you want to get a strong setup with arrow unit GX then this Pokemon might be for you uh, it's it's not bad. I definitely see Malamar deck sort of uh, shifting, getting a variation with this Pokemon as well. You'll be able to build Malamar decks, but this guy is the focus as well now. All right, next up, let's see. I think think there are only a couple Pokemon left. Yeah, Eevee and Snorlax. All right, so this is the big guy. This is probably going to be the most relevant Tag Team GX Pokemon. Okay. This is how it looks, the regular art. Right. So this Pokemon has three attacks as well. Uh, first up, Cheer Up. You just attach an energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Not very impressive, but, you know, it's there. Uh, the big attack this Pokemon has that make it very, very dangerous is Dump Truck Press. For four energy, if your opponent's active Pokemon is an evolution Pokemon, this attack does 120 more damage. Wow. So yeah, this attack essentially does, it's going to hit all of the Stage 1 GX Pokemon, Stage 2 GX Pokemon, and any any evolved Pokemon, period, for 240 damage for 4 energy. I used to think it was 3, uh, but then I found out it was 4, and yeah, it is indeed still 4, it says here. I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was like 3 energy in the beginning, I don't know, maybe I'm just crazy. But even for 4 energy, you just slap 2 DCs. It is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Uh, 240 damage, no other costs. I mean, against basic Pokemon, 
it's going to be very weak. But against evolved Pokemon, which are basically the meta, then you take care of them very easily. You don't even need add-ons. And even, I mean, all of the Tag Team GXs are basic, so I guess you're not going to really hit those two. But if they ever release, like, I guess, uh, in state, they get, like, stage forms too, then you can even hit those for a lot of damage, and that's before add-ons. So very, very insane, uh, 240. You take care of anything, really. You just slap a choice ban on this Pokemon, and you take care even of the biggest stage 2 GXs. Like Metagross GX dies in one hit. Everybody just gets knocked out. So that's powerful. Because it's a colorless Pokemon, it means that you can combine this with basically almost any deck. And if you run DCs, it's even easier. And its last attack, Megadon Friends GX. This Pokemon, it does 210 for 4 energy. And if it has at least one more, then you can draw cards until you have 10 cards in your hand. So I guess if you would want to draw a lot of cards while you're making this, while you're performing this GX attack, you know, you spend one more energy, you draw until you have 10. Probably not very worth it, but maybe in situations it could come up. Really, the best thing about this Pokemon is Dump Truck Press, and its HP is very high too, at 270, the same as Venusaur's. So, very, very strong. Uh, the fighting weakness is probably going to keep it maybe a little bit in check against Buzzhole. Buzzhole is going to have a great time against this Pokemon. Man, it's just so many sets get released, and Buzzhole is just still... It, it's probably still going to be the most reliable deck to use. I mean, we already looked at Zekrom. You know, it covers that Pokemon. Then we see that it can cover Snorlax too. It can perform good thanks to the weakness against this guy too, so yeah, <laughs> Buzzle and Lycanroc, they're always going to be relevant, that's that's what it seems, but yeah, Snorlax, I would say, just for Dump Truck Press, I'd say it's the most, it's probably going to make the most significant impact in Standard, at least, uh, maybe with Gengar giving it the biggest competition, and just because, like I've said, you can take care of Stage 1 GX is very, very easily, like, Zorark GX can't do shit. Like, even if they slap uh, dumbbells on, they can't survive. So, you make all their Acerolas useless, they make all that combo useless, you just take care of them in one hit, as long as you get the energy on. You can use this in any deck, too, like, you can, I can just even use, like, Magnezone and just put this Pokemon in as a tech, it's gonna take care of them, it's just very powerful. So yeah, Snorlax GX, keep your eyes out for this guy. And I think there shouldn't be any Tag Team GXs left. Right, there's nobody else left. So let's just cover the rest of the great Pokemon in this set. So let's see, what do we get here? We got Shaman Prism. I should cover the Prism Pokemon too. So 80 HP, very low, very, very low. It's got Free Retreat at least, but... I wish the HP was at least 120 or something. Alright. And this Pokemon has Flower Storm, only one attack, like many of the Prisms. So this attack does 30 damage times the amount of basic energy attached to all your all of your Pokemon. So, a great Pokemon to use with Venusaur from Shining the Legends, once again. Other Pokemon that provide uh, energy acceleration, especially Grass. Uh, if you have, like, let's say, 5 energies around... 30 damage times the amount of base that touches all of your Pokemon. So it's going to be 150 for 2. Let's say if you have 5 energies around. So it can definitely do a lot of damage. For sure. Uh, so maybe this is going to be a good little grass tech. In grass decks. Any other prisms? I think we should have a few more. Yeah, there we go. Tapu Koko. This is my favorite. Uh, this is going to be a very good Pokemon. That I've been waiting for it to come out. So Tapu Koko Prism, 130 HP, uh, 1 Retreat Cause, Metal Resistance, and Fighting Weakness. Not the greatest stats for a Prism, but they're workable. It's got Ancestor's Dance. So once during your turn, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you can use its ability. Choose two of your bench Pokemon and attach a Lightning Energy from your discard pile to them. Then put this Pokemon into the Lost Zone. And I don't think your opponent gets a prize. It doesn't get knocked out. So, you don't really give a prize, and even if you do, you basically sacrifice this Pokemon to get two Lightning Energies. 
So that's very, very good. Uh, you got to attach them to two different Pokemon. But it's still energy acceleration nonetheless. Like, I'm really still all for Zeraora. I think that Pokemon has a lot of potential that people aren't really capitalizing on. And this Pokemon really helps out that deck a lot. Like, you can even power up your Zeraora GX even faster than normal. Out of the Lightning Pokemon can get powered up faster than normal. And, you know, of course, with add-ons like Choice Band and the exclusive Electro Power they get, you can push for big knockouts easily. And this Pokemon is very, very good for that. Like, I can even use this in Ray Eels. I can use this in a lot of decks. An amazing Lightning Pokemon for sure. It has an attack too. Magabolt does 120 for 3. It's not very great for a Prism Pokemon, but, you know, it's a still it's still a solid attack. It, it's going to do great damage for if you hit for weakness. can take care of a few things. So it's a nice little Pokemon. The best thing about it is definitely the ability. Free energy acceleration, man. You get two lightnings from your discard pile. Awesome. So definitely an awesome card, uh, Tapu Koko Prism. Right, right. Do we have any other Prism Pokemon before I move to the regular stuff? I don't think... Well, we got the Black Market. This card is, is going to be hell. There's so many busted cards in this set that I don't I don't really know like how the metagame is kind of going to shift. Uh, Buzzwell is probably still going to be the best, but you know we'll see what happens. This stadium is is very insane, and it, it's crazy that it can be combined with Zorak GX and just so many broken dark Pokemon. So Black Market, it's the Prism Stadium for the Darkness Pokemon. Uh, it supports that type. We basically get these for different types. We got them from Lightning, Grass, Fire, and this one is going to be Darkness. Basically what it does, it still has the same sort of flow in immunity effect like the other stadiums in that you can't get rid of it with item or supporter cards. You got to play a stadium to get rid of it. So yeah, it has that self-protection. And its actual effect is whether, whether any player's Darkness Pokemon with any Darkness Energy gets knocked out by damage, that opponent takes one less prize cards. So basically, Darkness Pokemon that need to have Darkness Energy on, when they get knocked out, they give one less prize. So regular Pokemon, you basically get no prize for beating them. And Stage 1 and Stage 2 GXs are going to give only one prize. So, oh my god. This is going to make a hellish interaction in Expanded with a Pokemon like uh, Sableye from Dark Explorers. Maybe that fucking deck is going to come back. We still don't have puzzles, but you never know. You never know, man. You know, with things like the... Uh, I forgot what it, that A-spec is called. Life... Um, life pill or whatever it was. Yeah. And a cart like this, it just, it just can make a lot of troll strategies... Uh, happen again, and I, I don't I don't like it. It's it can be very strong. Definitely, Zorog Jix can utilize this to give one less prize. So that's another thing. I mean, Zorog usually has a DCE on, so maybe it won't be able to utilize it as effectively as I'm thinking. But you best believe Darkness Pokemon appreciate a card like this uh, to give less prizes. Maybe Tyranidar can be a little bit better thanks to this. Just Darkness Pokemon in general. Very, very busted, man. Very, very busted. I don't like this kind of effect. It really makes... It makes a lot of... It creates a lot of shitty inter interactions. So, I don't know. I hope it's not as good as I think it's going to be, but... I mean, in the decks that are going to utilize it, you best believe it's going to be strong. So, that's all I'm going to say about this card. Right. Okay, I think we covered all of the... Prisms, too. Right, so let's cover some of the more standard stuff here. So, first of all, everybody's favorite fire-breathing starter, dragon-like dude, Charizard, is going to come out in this set. And it only took them a million years, but basically since Arceus, I'd say, maybe, or the Flash Fire Charizard DX. But yeah, when they print Charizard cards, they're usually, usually shit. This is one of those exceptions when it rarely happens. This is actually a good Charizard card. Stage 2, 150 HP, 
uh, has one great ability and a good attack as well. So Roaring Resolve, once during your turn, you can put two damage counters on this Pokemon. If you do, you search your deck for two Fire Energies and attach them to this Pokemon. So obviously the damage counters hurt. It basically makes you a 130 stage two right off, right from the, right from the get go. But you basically you're already uh, have your attack ready. Continuous Blaze Ball, which you discard all fire energies from this Pokemon, and it does 50 more damage times the energy you discarded for each card you discarded. So essentially, since it starts at 30, and you're gonna discard two if you want to perform the minimum for the attack. You're doing 130 for two. You discard the third one, you discard three, that's 180. So that's already in, in a very big range to get one shot. You slap a choice band, you discard three, take care of stage one GXs in one shot. You discard four, and then you're basically at, let's see here, uh, 230. You can take care of even stage twos, stage two GXs uh, with a choice band. So very, very strong, and it's especially good because you can you get the energies from the deck to yourself. It basically helps itself, so that's great. Uh, with a little bit more support, like in Expanded, where we have cards like um, the Blacksmith too, I can see this card getting one-shots very easily. Uh, very, very good for a Stage 2 Pokemon. So... It's going to be pretty good. I actually can't wait to try this out if I manage to get it, hopefully. And, you know, we do have some good fire support too. We got the Heat Factory. There's cards like Blaziken too, which maybe they can help this Pokemon out a lot. But there's other good stuff. I mean, you never know. Uh, let's see. Next up, it's going to be, of course, uh, well... Before I talk about Blastoise, actually, let's see, Ninetales, I think Ninetales is pretty good as well. So, yeah, this Ninetales, it has nine temptations. Once during your turn, you may discard two far energy cards from your hand. And if you do, switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with one of their active Pokemon. So, this is essentially a bright look or bloodthirsty eyes that you can essentially do every turn as long as you have fire energies to discard. So, this, this can be a useful... Pokemon, especially since we have the sort of fire dragon claw thing that came out in Dragon Majesty, which lets you add four fire energies from your deck to your hand. So maybe this card is can be partnered with something like Zorark or another deck, and you have another Lux Chomp style deck, kind of like uh, people use, you know, Lycanroc GX with Bloodthirsty Eyes in decks. So this is why I'm talking about this Pokemon, is I, I think this ability is quite good. Uh, pooling abilities are always strong. The cost, you know, it's not the most flexible, but there's definitely ways to utilize this card. And Flame Tail, uh, 90 for 3, it's not so great, but you know, it's there. It might not be so bad in emergency situations if you want to attack with this Pokemon. You know, why not? I guess. Uh, it's okay. So there's nine tails too. I'm glad I didn't forget about you. Next up we got a Moltres. All right. Ah oh, damn, it comes as a rare hollow, but maybe that's good. It's gonna look good. So this Pokemon is just—it's just one of my favorite cards from this set. It might be my favorite card from this set actually, uh, just because it's my my kind of card. It's pro it probably won't see much play in standard, unless maybe fire decks make a comeback. But in Expanded, I would definitely use this in decks like Raybor, you know, Blaziken. I mean, you can even use this in Blaziken uh, in Standard, too, with Firestarter. So, yeah, it's one of those Pokemon that can do a lot of damage for a lot of Fire Energies. You do 180 for 4, and then you discard 3 Energies. You know, you slap a Choice Band, you get 1 Hit Knockouts. Same idea. And then Top Burner, you discard all Fire Energies from this Pokemon, then discard a card... From the top of their deck. So this is like that Magmar's deck at attack. I don't like it, but you know it is what it is. We've got it. We have this as opposed to a regular attack. Maybe it can be good. Good HP, 120. Finding resistance is useful. Retreat. I wish it was one instead of two, but it is what it is. It's also weak to lightning, so it's going to give you that variety in fire decks that are usually weak to water. Super cool, Moltres. I love it. 
Next up, we got Blastoise, the next starter. What you doing? Okay, so this, just like Charizard, this Pokemon has a strong ability when it comes to energy acceleration. You look at the top six, six cards of your deck, and you can grab any number of water energies, and you attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. So it's not quite Deluge, but it gives you the chance to get cards from the deck, so you don't have to worry about getting the cards in your hand. So, depending on how you build your deck, depending on if you have, let's say, a couple of these out, you should be able to, you know, grab a bunch of water energies and prepare your Pokemon, build them up. Hydro Tackle is also a solid attack on a Pokemon that's basically a support Pokemon for the most part. 150 for 3, and you do 30 damage to yourself. It's, it's uh, an okay cost, I guess. You do a lot of damage still. And... HP is pretty good, you know, just another energy acceleration Blastoise. We've seen them too many times, uh, so you guys know what you should expect. Good Pokemon. There's a lot of water Pokemon that can definitely utilize this, this Pokemon. Uh, Lapras, uh, what else? I can't really think right now, but I know there's a lot of water Pokemon, water GXs. Uh, in Expanded 2, this Pokemon might be pretty good. I mean, I don't know. I actually would have wished they just released another Deluge Blastoise, but maybe it's good for them to do some different shit from time to time instead of just re-releasing the same cards, which they do that anyway. All right, so it's pretty simple. I don't, I can't really think of any strategies that can, you know, utilize this Pokemon in standard uh, besides Pokemon like Lapras, but it's a water Pokemon, you know, water energy acceleration. Uh, it, it's definitely good. Uh, I think I need to hurry up and talk about some other cards. We got a lot of shit here. Right, let's see here. Gyarados. I kind of remember this card being good too. Yeah. Uh, good good Pokemon for stage 1, 150 HP. And it's got two good attacks. It's the first attack that's really going to... If you're going to use this Pokemon, you're going to focus on the first attack. With Distilled Blast... You reveal the top 7 cards of your deck, and this attack does 30 more damage times the amount of water energy you find there. And then you uh, shuffle those energies back into the deck and discard the other cards. So yeah, that's what this guy does. It starts at 30, and what you basically do is like you, you're you going to get rid of your non-water energy cards from your deck by doing this. But then, since you have less of those cards and only the water energy remain... You're going to be doing more and more damage the more you use this attack. So if you reveal, let's say, 7 water energies with this Pokemon. You know, you do 7 times 30. Uh, that's 210. So that you can do max 240 damage with 1 energy. So that's the extreme. But even if you do, like, you reveal, let's say, 3. You know, that's 120 for 1. That's pretty good on a stage 1. You know? It's, it's a very strong Pokemon, for sure. Um, yeah. I can't I can't really say anything uh, bad about this Pokemon. Just for the first attack, it's just great. Stage 1, high HP. And then if you want to use Hyper Beam, I guess you can do 100 for 3. And then you discard an energy on your opponent. But yeah, man. It's just... Uh, I think my math is right. 7 times uh, 30... That should be 200 and uh, yeah, 210 plus 30 more. That's 240. Very very strong. So you can definitely build a deck around this Pokemon. Just have a lot of water energies and aim to make mass damage. Kind of like how when Rayquaza X was released in Dragon's Exalted, and now with the uh, what's that? That Ultra Beast, that Dark Ultra Beast, I forgot its name, but you just put like just energies in your deck and you put a Pokemon like that and you reveal just energies and you can do high damage. That's that's basically the combo. It's more of a troll deck, but hey, maybe you can work really good. Okay, so where are we now? Articuno, I know this Pokemon is really, really good as well. 
So this is a support Pokemon for the most part, but it has a strong ability with Blizzard Veil. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, whether your opponent plays a supporter card from their hand, prevent all effects of that card onto your bench water Pokemon. So this is very, very strong. Water decks definitely gain a lot of power from this because Guzma can't touch them. Shit like Plumeria for those fucking troll decks that like to use that card can't touch them. And just any sort of supporter just can't touch water Pokemon on the bench. But it needs to be active, and this is where it kind of gets ruined. Ah, uh, damn it, I just noticed that. In Cerebi, the, the well, they always have errors in their text for the, from the Japanese translations, but it would work from the bench too. But since this has got to be active, then uh, it just it makes it not as powerful. And Colt Cyclone isn't the greatest attack either. You do 70 for 2, and then you can move to water energies from this Pokemon to water of your bench Pokemon. I mean, it's a basic Pokemon, but it's still not the highest damage around. Yeah, kind of too bad, but it's definitely a good ability for water decks. Maybe you can still use this. Uh, stats are standard, I guess. 110 HP. It's a little bit less than Moltres. And it's got the same bottom stats, too. Alright. Okay, next up we got Zapdos, too. I guess I gotta talk about you as well. So if this Pokemon was on the bench and became your active Pokemon this turn, uh, this attack does, basically, you do 80 for 1. Now, the sad thing is, is that it's not affected by weakness. Come on, why the fuck did you do this? It's It's not good. Uh, it only has one attack, it doesn't have any other trick, and, I mean, it's high damage when you can do the hit and switch thing. You use this with a Pokemon like Tabu Koko, I guess, or a Pokemon like Don Winks, and Retreat, but it, it, they didn't have to make it so weak. I, I, the damage is okay, just not being able to hit for weakness is, is kind of shitty. And same bottom stats, same stats with Articuno, weak to lightning. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Next up, uh, we got Ampharos GX here. I need to talk about you as well. Man, I'm going to be here all day. But yeah, this Pokemon is a stage 2 uh, with, electro, with electro powers. Uh, yeah, you basically... You can use this Pokemon to recycle them. Put them from your Disco Pop Bank into your hand while you're doing 30. So essentially what you can do is like reuse them over and over. Doing one for, let's say, you use two. You do one for 90, and then you get them back. So that's good. And Impact Bolt. Decent attack too, I guess. You do 150, you discard all lightning energies. And then Electrical GX. You can use the GX attack. Search your deck for seven Pokemon and put them into your hand. So I guess if you still need to set up, you get this guy out, you can use this GX attack. Alright, it's mostly, it mostly is going to be used as a Pokemon to just do high damage for power recharge, I would say. Of course, the other stuff can be useful too, especially Impact Bolt, I guess. You can basically combine Impact Bolt with, let's say, two Electro Powers and get a one-shot, and then you can get them back with power recharge anyway. So yeah, uh, Afro is a good stage 2 GX, for sure. Okay. What about the other GXs? Regular GXs, we should have a couple. There's the Mr. Mime here. So this was supposed to come in Celestial Storm or, I guess, Dragon Majesty, if we go by the English rules. Uh, this was a card that was in... Uh, what was the Japanese name called? Well, where it has all the the third generation remake cards, revamp cards. Just like back then, we had two Mr. Mime EXs. Then it's the same idea here. We got the Mr. Mime GX that blocks even numbers. And this one has magic odds blocking 10, 30, 50, 70, 90, 110, 130, 150, 170. You guys understand. Uh, odd damage, basically. And I think the rest of the stuff is the same. The same GX attack, the same uh, regular attack. So, 
You can use this as a wall Pokemon too, I guess. Index. Yeah, it just basically comes in here. Okay. Next up we got a little muck. <laughs> this Pokemon is gonna be hell. So maybe thanks to this card, you know, Buzzle is finally gonna meet its match. With this card, you combine this with the Trash Lynch Garbodor and they make a hell of a combo. Unusual appetite when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve. You look at the top six cards of your opponent's deck, discard any number of item cards you find there. And your opponent shuffles the other cards back into the deck. Now this is very, very strong for a multiple of reasons. First of all, you look at your opponent's deck so you can see their stuff. You discard items. And, I mean, even if you don't run Trash Lanch, just losing a bunch of your items can be so crucial, man. It's deck destruction too, so it can help your opponent deck out as well. If they lose a couple of those cards. And... You know, the worst of all is that it fuels Trashland Garbodor. So, yeah, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time because I don't want to make this video too long. But, yeah, this is one of the best cards from this set. It's going to be combined with Trashland Garbodor. And it's going to give hell to all of us uh, that don't run the deck, basically. They work perfectly together. Uh, the trash Pokemon, garbage Pokemon. Damn it. All right. I feel like the Pokemon company is trolling us. I, I swear to God. Alright, next up we got... Uh, let me see here, Hoopa GX. Uh, let's check you out. This Pokemon is very good too. Good General Darkness GX Pokemon. With Rogue Ring, you can search your deck for two cards. Put them into your hand, just for one Darkness energy. Very strong. Then it has a good Darkness attack. Dark Strike, 160 for 3, and then it can attack. Uh, we've seen this before in other GXs. And then Devil Hand GX. It can do 30 damage to 6 of your opponent's Pokemon EX and Pokemon GX. And you may choose to use the same Pokemon more. Okay, so yeah, what this Pokemon does is basically you can choose 6 Pokemon GX or EX and do 30 damage to them 6 times. And you can choose the same Pokemon too. So it's a very, very flexible spreading sniping attack. Maximum, you're basically doing 180 damage in the form of spread. And that's very, very strong. So this Pokemon is very, very good. I'm probably going to use this in my Darkness, my Expanded Darkness deck. With the Dark Cries, all that stuff. Incineroar. GX. Come on. Alright, stage 2 Pokemon. So this Pokemon doesn't have really... If you look at its attacks, they're not that impressive. You know, you do 130 for 3, discard a special energy. Uh, it works with any energy. And then Darkness Tornado, it's going to do 50 more damage. For each damage counter on this Pokemon, it's just like a big rage attack. Uh, if this guy's hurt, you can probably KO a Pokemon easily. But what makes it great is that... With Scar Change, it basically supplies itself automatically. Uh, once during your turn, you can put three damage cards in this Pokemon, search your deck for up to three Darkness Energy, and attach them to this Pokemon. So this is very, very strong. You basically don't have to care about Energy Acceleration so much, because you basically build this guy up. So even if you don't attach Energies every turn, while you're trying to evolve into this guy, maybe, you know... You can grab the energies instantly like that, start attacking. And of course, with other interactions like with Dark Cry X and Expanded, you can build, uh, get a lot of darkness energy on the field that way, build that guy's attack up, and just so many implications. I don't really need to explain it. It's definitely a good Pokemon for this ability. Stage 2, so high HP, you know, only one retreat, Psychic Resistance. Uh, it's pretty good stage 2 dark Pokemon. Nothing else to say. We got Cabalion GX. Man, it's just... There's so many cards in here. Um, I'm trying to cover all of the GXs and all the good cards. So, yeah. So this guy, 170 HP. I think it doesn't have a retreat. Or maybe it has one. I can't really tell. Uh, let's scroll down here. 
So yeah, it does have one. Each of your Pokemon that have any metal energies can't be affected by special conditions. So this is like Verizian EX for metal Pokemon. It can be pretty handy. I mean, we don't have laser in it in standard, but it is what it is. It's still good. Then dual saber, if there's any stadium card. Uh, this attack is going to do 110 for 2. Pretty good. And GX attack during your opponent's next turn. None of your opponent's Pokemon can attack. Wow. So you essentially completely stall your opponent out for one turn if you do this. Good Pokemon as well for Metal decks. Alright. So I'm going to be here all day, but I do need to cover a few more Pokemon. So let's look at the fossils because they're going to be... Well, we're not going to have Maxi anymore, but they do have some strong abilities. So for example, this Omastar, as long as you don't have any... You don't have more Pokemon to play than your opponent. Your opponent can't play item cards. So a strong item lock. That's why kind of Maxi was banned. And they made a good thing. It was good. It was a good call. I'm not really that impressed. They always make fossil Pokemon shit. 130 HP is terrible. A 2 for 60 attack is absolutely terrible. Especially since you go through so many hoops to get out these fossil Pokemon out. Not only should they be... You know, up there when it comes to other stage 2 Pokemon, they should actually surpass them. But not only they don't surpass them, they make them worse too. And then Kabutops, kind of the same idea. Not really that good, but you know, it's always still better than Omastar. That's what another thing they always do. They make Kabutops always better than Omastar. Favoritism. With Fossil Memory, as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent can't play any supporter cards from the hand. So this is another very busted ability too. Maybe this Pokemon can actually be used in its own deck. Maybe. I mean, Rock Slide does 80 for 3 and 20 damage to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. It's not the greatest attack, but, you know, it's definitely better than Omastar, like I've said. And Supporter Lock is powerful, too. So, I guess if people want to find a way to make this Pokemon work, you know, you know they're here. But they're going to they're gonna be difficult. Okay, now for Nidoqueen. Nido Queen. Let's find out. Uh, yeah. So they changed. The, the effect is kind of different from Serebi, but it's still strong. So this is a throwback to the Queendom deck. Nido Queen from Farrell and Leaf Green. EX Farrell and Leaf Green. With Power Lariat, this attack is going to do 50 more damage for each evolution Pokemon on your bench. So if you have a bunch of evolution Pokemon, you can essentially do 260 damage for 3 energies. Strong. And Mother Call, once during your turn, you may search your deck for a Pokemon, except Pokemon GX or Pokemon EX, and put it into your hand. So it helps you evolve into your Pokemon too. So if there's going to be any deck, regular stage 2 deck, that's going to be the best best one that has a, a chance in the metagame, it's going to be a Needle Queen deck. Uh, straight up. That's it. Uh, it does a lot of damage. Self-sufficient. I mean, in Cerebi, the effect was more broken, being able to do, for just even basic Pokemon, extra damage. But yeah, I knew it was too good to be true. Okay, let's see. I don't want to forget anything. But I think this should be the most relevant cards. Maybe there's a few other Pokemon that I'm going to, I'm missing, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I can rock GX too. What the fuck are you doing here? So... I've never looked at this card, actually. This might be like a promo they're bundling in here. So, when you evolve into this Pokemon, you discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Oh my god. Why did they release a card like this? Okay, this is going to be the premise for more trolling. I can tell you that. Axarok just does 120 for 3, and then the GX attack does 3 damage for each energy card in your opponent's discard pile. The GX stack can be pretty busted as well. So if they have like uh, 8, you can do 240. If they've got 5, you can do 150. It's a strong GX attack. Okay, busted ass fighting Pokemon too. Great. And I think I need to cover... Uh, we're going to be covering the trainers and Jirachi. I can't forget about Jirachi. It's just too powerful. Jirachi with Wish Star. This is a throwback to the EX Deoxys Jirachi. If this Pokemon is active, you can look at the top five cards of your deck. Get a trainer and put it into your hand. 
and then shuffle the other cards into your deck, and then this Pokemon is asleep. Basically, this Pokemon is going to help out just about any deck, and especially decks that want to evolve and set up, since you can get trainer cards, and, you know, you don't even... Like, you don't even attack. I mean, it's not relevant in the, the way the rules are right now, but it's a great Pokemon, for sure. It's going to see a lot of play in every deck, I would say. And what else? Yeah, I don't want, I don't want to take longer, so we're just going to talk about a few supporter cards that mean anything. First and foremost, Erega's Hospitality. I talked about this card a lot, so you guys should be aware of it. It's an excellent supporter. Uh, once again, kind of a remake to Steven's advice from the EX series. Uh, you draw a card for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. You can't play this if you have uh, basically six or more cards in hand. I mean, in the English it says you need to have four or fewer cards in hand without this card. But it's the same idea. Uh, there's a little cost, but you draw a lot of cards. And... Let's see, we got Bill's Analysis. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. You may reveal up to two trainer cards you find there and put them into your hand. So this is what this guy does. It basically, it, you can't get any card like with Cynthia's Feelings and Misty, but you can get two trainers. So you reveal seven, you don't have to discard a card like Misty, and you can get up to two trainer cards. So depending on how you built your deck, this might be like more effective than something like Skyla, maybe, or just other cards that grab trainer cards to your hand, you know, it can be pretty good, I mean, if you don't reveal anything, then it's kind of bad, but it's it's definitely a good supporter, I feel like it's going to see play, and we've got Brock's Grid, kind of a remake, uh, it's the same effect as the Evolutions effect, you shuffle six in any combination of Pokemon and basic energies back into your deck. Now we got Dana. Oh shit. Clicked at the wrong card. Dana. Yeah. So I think this card is supposed to be like a um, promo too, and they're bundling in here. Uh, the Battle Amazon chick, one of them. You can you can only play this card if your active Pokemon is a stage 2. Your opponent's active Pokemon is a stage 2 Pokemon. You search your deck for up to 2 cards put them into your hand. Sweet. Wow, this is a pretty hot full art. Yeah. Alright. Good stuff. Uh, but yeah, this should be like the other... All of the Battle Frontier... Not Battle Frontier, Battle Mazant chicks should be in here. Or I think there should be at least 2. But we got buff padding if the retreat cost Pokemon is attached to this 4 that Pokemon gets 50 HP so bad card for them to release making the stage tag team GX Pokemon even beefier they already have a lot of HP a lot of them have 4 retreat anyway so this gives them 50 HP damn it so that's not good and we got Dangerous Pill next. Dangerous Drill, not Pill. Discard a Darkness Energy from your hand. If you do, you may discard a Tool Card or a Special Energy from your opponent's Pokemon. I don't think this is as good as Field Blower. Even if you run like a Darkness deck, it gives you a little bit of flexibility. But it still is a minus, a minus one. You discard a Darkness Energy. And it only discards one card, not two. As opposed to Field Blower. So I feel like Field Blower is it's still much better. I mean, it gives you the option to discard even a special energy, but I I don't I don't see it being as good as Field Blower. Maybe people are gonna play it in Darkness decks, but Field Blower should still be better, I'd say. Next up, we got Electro Charger. Flip two coins for each heads. Get an Electro Power from your discard pile into your deck. So yeah, they really want to favor that card. I guess they want us to use it people aren't using it next we got Evelyn this is the other chick from uh, the battle Mazan. you can only play this card if your opponent's active Pokemon is a stage one draw four cards uh, this might not be a bad effect but with 
a card like Eriga coming from the same set, I doubt this card is going to see that much play. Maybe that's just me. Jasmine. Jasmine is pretty good. So, you can search your deck for a metal Pokemon and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. And if you go second on your first turn, you can search your deck but for five metal Pokemon instead. So yeah, I remember how much I kind of, I couldn't believe it when I read this card for the first time on Cerebee. It's a busted effect. If you use this, if you play second, if you go second on your first turn and you use this kind of like Lily in a way, getting five metal Pokemon, any metal Pokemon, mind you, is an insanely broken effect. And in metal decks in general, this is a great supporting card. Ah, she looks kind of pissed on the full art. Okay, that's interesting. So, good card for metal decks for sure. Let's see. We got... A Grass Memory Fairy Charm. Uh, metal Goggles Morgan. Yeah, the other chick. This card, Donna, Evelyn, and Nita from your hand. If you do, look at the top 12 cards of your deck. Yeah, so basically you gotta discard the other sister chicks uh, from the Battle of Mazan. And if you do, you can look at the top 12 cards of your deck and basically get any energy and attach them. It can be a pretty broken effect, but it's kind of hard to use, so... I don't know, you gotta run with the other chick supporters, sister supporters, so... It's going to be difficult. Pokemon Communication makes a return here. So it's good. And I think Wondrous Labyrinth. So there's another Prism card here. For fairies. The attacks of each player's non-fairy type Pokemon cost one more. Wow, this can be pretty strong. Uh, this is pretty good, actually. Gardevoir appreci will appreciate this card. And... Fairy decks in general are going to appreciate this. Okay. We got Viridian Forest. We got a few cards. So, there's a few cards in here as well. But I think the most important cards I covered. Uh, things like Lavender Town. Where you, once turn your turn, they play. And the, each player can look at their opponent's hand. Uh, this is a bad card. Bad design. I don't know why they printed it. Kind of eliminating, not eliminating skill, but kind of making things messier uh, when it comes to skill play. And you know what? I think I'm going to call this a wrap. <laughs> I think I covered most of the relevant cards. If I missed any one of them, then I'm sorry, but I started to rain outside too, so I think there's going to be some noise here. And I really just, I got to take a damn break. <laughs> I've been talking so long. I want to make this videos like this best cards videos, keep them like short, but it's just there's so many cards you got to cover in these big sets these days that it's impossible. But I would say like the most relevant cards from this set when it comes to Tag Team GXs would be Gengar and Snorlax. Uh, from when it comes to regular GXs, all of them are kind of good. There's not really anybody that really stands out. Ampharos can be pretty good, you know. Um, Lycanroc is going to be a troll card for sure. You know, Cobalion, useful for metal decks. And then we got both both Hoopa and Incineroar are very good darkness Pokemon too. But the, the biggest cards that I think that are going to make things pretty nasty are the Alolan Muck. That's going to be combined with Trash Lange, Garbodor. And cards like Snorlax, for sure. We're going to get a lot of more consistency, thanks to Erika and a lot of the great supporters and trainers in here. I'm pretty sure I missed a few of them. I mean, Pokemon Communication, you guys know what it does. And I don't remember what judge, Judge's Whistle does. But the biggest one is definitely Erika. And we talked about Build 2 and a few of the other ones. It's going to make things pretty interesting. Uh, the Fossils. There's even Aerodactyl is actually quite good. I got to talk about this Pokemon. Being able to do like 180 against GX and EX Pokemon. Since this is just a stage one like fossil in a way, it doesn't need to evolve two times, like Kabuto and Omas and Omanite, then this Pokemon might be one of the more useful fossils too. Being able to do high damage, only needing three energies. Yeah. But for the most part, 
this set is very, very busted. Lots of good stage 2 Pokemon. Charizard, Blastoise, Nidoqueen, a bunch of other guys too. Lots of crazy Pokemon like Alolan Muck. Good prison Pokemon for Lightning like Tapu Koko. The Tag Team GXs are going to shake things up too. And got Gyarados too as a good stage 1. There's just a lot of, a lot of great cards in here. It, it's definitely a set that really shake things up, kind of like Lost Thunder, I'd say. It brings a lot of power attackers, that's for sure. Yeah. So, I think I need to wrap this video up. I definitely, just like with any set that comes out, you usually do have, they usually do include something that make you, you gotta buy this set no matter what, or at least get some cards from the set no matter what. And this is another one of those sets. You really want to get your Erika, put it in decks, it's pretty good. Cards like Pokemon Communication, uh, maybe that's going to start seeing play again too, with a lot of decks running a lot of Pokemon. And a lot of other very relevant cards that work in basically any deck. So, yeah. So, this video is a wrap. I'm going to finish up right now. I hope you guys enjoy. hope you guys subscribe. Leave a like. Share this with your friends. Uh, my channel is an excellent hub for all things Pokemon TCG. So I hope you guys subscribe. Thank you guys for watching as always. Saber 4 and what's up?